o'clock, welcome to the study session for the Town Council of the Town of Los Gatos. Uh, may we have the roll call, please? Thank you and good evening. Council Member Mariko Sayak. Here. Council Member Steve Leonardis. Here. Council Member Rob Rennie. Here. Vice Mayor Barbara Spector. Here. Mayor and Chair Marsha Jensen. Here. Uh, according to the agenda, I would normally do verbal communications, which are something that's for something not on the agenda traditionally. Um, it's not technically a public hearing, but there's a lot of you here, and some of you may well want to be heard. So I will try to uh, give us, can you just, by a show of hands, if you think that you want to talk tonight, just kind of give me an idea. Okay, one, two. And, and some others may be inspired. I'm just going to figure out how much time to leave at the end. Well, actually, I'm just going to do it like a public hearing. And then we'll just get everybody in there. So um, what we're doing tonight is having a study session to discuss alcohol and beverage. Alcohol, beverage, and entertainment, should that be a policy? Should that be an ordinance? If, depending on which one it is, what process does it take? Depending on which one it is, what does the council want to do vis-a-vis -vis that process? Uh, how do we want to change it if we do it all? So it's a study session. No action is going to be taken tonight. It's just a matter for the council to provide direction for the staff. Depending upon them, what that direction is going to be, then the staff is going to come back to council or whatever it is that we decide based upon which procedure is chosen or whether an ordinance or a policy is chosen. It's going to come back to the appropriate body with the appropriate document and or documents for consideration. So tonight's the first step in... Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say the first step. Tonight's the rebooted fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, or ninth step um, to start this again and determine what we want to do. So with that, I am going to, uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to look at the staff report that we have, which posts questions about that. Um, but I'm gonna look to staff for a, and it could be a com combination of staff members for a presentation on this item, Ms. Prevetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, actually, you did such a good job summarizing and giving the overview that we really don't have any additional comments. We've prepared overhead slides to guide your discussion, so after public testimony, if you wish, we can put those up there to guide your discussion. Uh, your report defines the um, path that this process has been on with respect to alcohol and beverage service policies, as well as some entertainment options. So we've gone through and also included in your packet are um, a draft ordinance that the um, that was made available to the policy committee so that way the full council also has that by way of background but I think given the uh, limited amount of time I think we really want to make sure you have adequate time for discussion and direction to staff so I don't think we have any additional comments at this time thank you okay does anyone have any fundamental questions because what I intend to do is call up those members of the public that want to speak and then go into council discussion and questions. So does anybody have any basic fundamental questions before I call up those pe people that want to talk? Okay, so if you'd like to speak to us tonight, come up so that we can be efficient. Um, fill out your card or hand it uh, to the clerk when you come up, but come on up, you have three minutes. Don't be shy, I don't know who, who to call and I'm seeing you there, Mr. Arzi, followed by Ms. Quintana followed by whoever else wants to raise their hand to indicate they want to talk, because I don't have any cards, so I can't call on you. Mr. Arzi. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, our alcohol and entertainment policies have already tested time, and they still work. Uh, what is good about them is that most downtown property owners and CUP op operators don't like them. Gee, I expected a chuckle. Um, they want a simple and easier process. Uh, and I would be leery of accepting most of staff's proposals as it may open the doors to more cronyism than what was already existing. Altering policies could be disastrous. That said, I'm going to talk about a few issues brought up in the package <coughs> from staff. Outdoor seating. I would propose that no outdoor seating other than what exists be allowed until more parking spaces are provided. And of course, no sidewalk seating be allowed until this happens. This concept is not unusual <clears throat> to Los Gatos, 
Back in the 70s, the council adopted a sundown ordinance that canceled all retail uses unless we joined a parking district. Certainly there is a precedent to this in Los Gatos. It's called no parking, no extra seating. On a second note about outdoor seating is the degeneration of our town amb ambience. Holtz is an exception to the rule because it did not bypass planning commission after DC, DRC and, gets, and got scrutinized heavily at that level. Chicago Steakhouse, Palacio, Oak and Rye are examples of the worst kind of tourist trap environments that we've done in this town. All of them hide the architecture with a mishmash of poor taste. Woodstock fares better on my list. My other concerns are the quantity of restaurants we have downtown, and that's a disturbing quantity added, excuse me. Um, my other concerns are quantity of restaurants we have downtown and the disturbing quantity added within the last few years. Chapter 20 of our town code warns you clearly, and I quote, however, too many restaurants in this area would displace retail uses that are vital to continue success. Property owners that hold CUPs, whether it be for restaurants or for any intensified use, are able to charge higher rents, which increases rents for mom and pops. This further degrades the town ambiance. Alcohol and entertainment clearly can have adverse effects on the entire town, and I entreat you to consider weighing the effects on overintensification, which might, might, which might be helpful to us all if you just define intensification. Thank you, Mr. Arce. Other questions? Hang on, because I have a question for you if no one else does. Mr. Arce, I have a question for you. Um, with respect to your statement about outdoor seating, you, you said that you oppose any outdoor seating unless there's additional parking. I take it that your comment assumes that the outdoor seating would be in addition to what someone already had, correct? I said that. Except, yes, except you what said exists. it later. I just want to make sure. So that if I have now allowed 100 seats and I put 50 of them outside, you would no, not I'm have not an objection. I'm not suggesting that we get rid of outdoor seating. As a matter of fact, I'm highly for outdoor seating. But outdoor seating creates intensification, and we, why do we want to change and continue to do intensification? It's fair to let the people have what they have and, and enjoy it. But as far as running chairs and tables down the streets of Los Gatos that are barely five feet wide in a lot of occasions, uh, that we, that we allow, <laughs> try to allow two feet for pedestrians. Just want to make sure that you're not talking about were existing seats already allowed? I've never been that okay. mean. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I wanted to make sure. <laughs> Might be cranky tonight. A little bit. OK. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Arzi? Councilwoman Sayak. Thank you. Um, Mr. Arzi, uh, two questions from, from your comments. One was you had made a comment. You gave examples of outdoor seating. And you mentioned that it hides architecture. Is it just, um, so a couple concerns there. One is, are you concerned that the outdoor seating wasn't scrutinized, therefore the, the placement hides the architecture of the building, or are you more concerned with the, just the people out there? No, I, I'm concerned with the quality of the, of the product that's being displayed in front of the historical buildings, uh, the mishmash of, of it, the undesigned approach to it, uh, the stays all day, doesn't get taken down at night. Uh, it's, I can go on and on. It's just not the ambiance that I grew up with in this town. Uh, we never did it that way. We always put our best foot forward, and that's not the way restaurants are operating when they have outdoor seating faced on the street level, to, on the street. Okay. And then a second question that I had for you, you, you ended with a definition of intensification. Yes. And um, ultimately, that's something that we'll have to define. But do you yourself have your own definition that you care to share with us on what intensification is? Is it specific to parking? Is it specific to square footage? How would you define it, or how would you suggest it be defined? Uh, we've been trying to define it for 30 years. Uh, what I have to say about it is not that important, but 
intensification in my book is when you <laughs> when you when you create more traffic problems uh, and and more parking problems. <clears throat> intensification is when you when you change a um, specialty restaurant, what just happened, that was a, uh, a, a an implanata shop to a full fledged restaurant. That's intensification in the first in the first place. Zona Rosa previous owners had one and a half employees, four four seats. We allowed it to turn into a 40 seat restaurant with five employees. That's intensification. So intensification goes on and on and on and on. Anything that increases the usage of the property is intensification. We can't deny that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Arthi. Mr. Ms. Quintana. I agree with everything that uh, Larry said. So um, thank you. You can have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> that, means, that means actually if you've heard somebody say what you've, you're going to say, consider whether or not you need to say it. But that, that little joke aside. I'll try not to repeat what he said, but I have other things to say. Okay. Um, Lee Quintana. Um, <clears throat> one thing is it was, wasn't clear to me with regard to entertainment, whether uh, we were talking about just entertainment that occurred within a closed building or that was outside entertainment as well. Um, I'd like to make the comment that I think four feet of sidewalk for pedestrians is very, very small. In my house, I make sure that everything has at least four feet between it or else I'm going to knock into it. Uh, and I agree that the... Uh, I love outdoor seating, but I do not think it should be it should exceed the total number of seats that a restaurant is allowed. Um, and I also think that the barriers that we require for outdoor seating if alcohol is sold really aren't effective and just cause that even more congestion for the pedestrian. Um, lastly, I want to talk about, and I agree with the intensification that, that Larry, Larry said, anything that increases parking, increases traffic, increase, increases square footage, increases the use, all adds to the intensity of the use. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about noise, and this is from personal experience. I, in the last couple of years, have had the pleasure of owning a condo in Hood River, Oregon, overlooking the Columbia River, right in the middle of downtown Hood River, within a block of City Hall, the library, theaters, everything. It's right there. Uh, and I consider Hood River what Las Gatas was uh, 30 or 40 years ago. When we bought it, we knew that things were going to change, but we figured it would be at a slow pace. I can tell you that over the last four years, the noise has increased tremendously. And most of the noise that is involved, and I don't, my unit does not face the main street. It is on the back side of the building, and the street, the next street over is a minor street. It's not a main street. In the last four years, the noise from alcohol and entertainment related uses has increased dramatically. On Friday, and Saturday nights, and sometimes even on Thursdays, I cannot go to sleep until after 1 o'clock because the music is too loud. They also allow five uh, events of outdoor music per year. The problem is it's in every single place. So you multiply that by many, 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 and you have almost weekends constant music at night. The other thing I would add is that they have replaced a lot of their retail with tasting, beer tasting, whiskey tasting, wine tasting. But all of the tasting rooms operate only until 7 o'clock, and then they close down. They don't open until 12 or 1. They do detract from retail. And those are the things that I would really uh, like you to consider, plus the fact of how do we actually measure noise to make sure it's not affecting residents. And, and like Hood River, where when I moved, bought my condo, it was the only condo in downtown. 
now there are many, many more. So the noise is increasing, the number of people affected by it are, is increasing, and I think that's approximately what's happening here, too. Thank you. Questions? Councilman Rennie has a question for you. Thank you, Mayor Jensen. Um, Ms. Katana, I was got a little confused in there. So the noise, were you describing Hood River or Los Gatos? Because I know you live up on Palm, so I'm not understanding. I, I was describing Hood River. However, the same problem has occurred in the past in Los Gatos. Uh, the, uh, one, one good example is on Broadway. And yes, even on Palm Avenue, I could hear the weekend bands that were playing at uh, the Chart House or whatever it's called now. I don't, it's not the Chart House, I mean the hotel. The Toll House Hotel. So noise travels, especially when you have hills and it can bounce back and forth. And that, that's a similar problem in Hood River. It's, it's a hilly town, just like Los Gatos is. Okay. Follow-up question, if I could? Yeah, just one. Um, so on the, on the noise, um, well, I think one idea proposed is music until 10 o'clock. Is that an appropriate time to shut things down? Well, if you're an old fogey like me, no. <laughs> I think 9 o'clock is more appropriate. You, you complained about 1 o'clock, but I don't think we have noise till 1 o'clock, do we? Uh, you know, we're not talking about what's existing. We're talking about... Making sure it doesn't happen? Making sure it doesn't happen as it has in the past. Okay. With Mountain Charlies and um, things on Broadway uh, or the noise that affected neighbors on Broadway. And it went for, up for blocks. And it took years and years and years to get it under control so that those residents don't have to suffer every weekend okay, in the you. summer. Ms. Quintana, I'm assuming you can hear jazz in the plaza from your house? Very quietly. But you, you can't? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I have good hearing, though, so that's a problem. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk to us? Um, I, I will cut it off at 6 as soon as I can, because we need to have time for the council to discuss it. So if you really have something to say, please come on up. And I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't know your name, so you'll have to tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Linda Iverson, and I live on Edelin. And um, I think I'm uh, speaking for many of my neighbors, and I'd like to address the noise. Um, I've lived in Las Gatas since 1963, and I've lived on Edelin since 1995. When I moved into Edelin, I had no idea about the noise that was going to occur from uh, Old Town. And the Waves restaurant was taken away. The noise got much better. And over the years, the street has closed, and it's been a peaceful neighborhood. I don't want to see any changes to the, um, the policies that are not now in force, because we still get problems from Old Town. I mean, I live downtown. I know I live downtown. I don't want to move from my house, so I put up with it. Well, we've got people Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, on holidays, walking down our street to the parking lot or just walking down our street, loud voices. Many times we've got um, the state, the wait staff, the whoever's working at the restaurants going down our streets. We've have had, have had some thievery on our street. So all of those happen when you're open longer and later and you've got more going on. And um, it isn't just Edelin, it's, it's uh, University, it's Miles, it's all those houses right in there. And we're, we're troubled by it. And I'm not, I'm not complaining about what's there now because I know I have to live with it, I, but I don't want it to increase. Okay, thank you. Questions? Anybody else? Please tell us your name. Hurry up, because we do want to leave some time between. Um, thank you, Terry Hope. Uh, I'm speaking as a resident. I'm at 212 Bella Vista, and I'm also speaking as a downtown business owner. Um, I'm appreciating that you're looking at all of these things and reviewing them, because I think that you know, as we evolve as a community, um, it, it is important to reconsider some of the uh, ordinances and rules that have been put into place. Um, I want to make it brief and just say I would like to have you take a look at 
the possibility of small coffee houses such as mine having poetry reading, acoustic music, indoors, um, finishing by 10 o'clock, and with no alcohol. Um, because some of the ordinances are written for you know, nightclubs um, that are being extended to small coffee houses like mine, you know, it prohibits us to do some of the things that have been traditional for coffee houses. And I, I just think we've got several nice coffee houses in town, including mine, and I would love to be able to expand my services um, and have that kind of entertainment. So that's it. Thank you. Questions for Ms. Hope? Thank you very much. Mr. Foley? Hello, Jim Foley, Rootstock Wine Bar. Um, we're supportive of the whole idea of allowing uh, entertainment. I think I've mentioned that a couple times before at uh, previous meetings. Something I just wanted to point out really quickly, I was looking at some of the draft language and um, I think that you proposed, Madam Mayor, and it looks like very, it's very limiting in the fact that it limits it per the type of license. Uh, personally, we have a type 42 and I don't see that listed here, so I think that would preclude us from being able to um, have the entertainment. And uh, I just wasn't sure why it was a maximum of four performers. I didn't know where that came from. But um, I think in general, we want to support having uh, you know different elements of live entertainment. I just want to bring those two comments up in case you're going to pass something tonight or in the future that includes this specific language that I saw here. Questions for Mr. Foley? And no, there's not going to be any action taken tonight that would result in some change in anything. Uh, Councilwoman Sayok. Um, two quick questions. What's a type 42? There's just different types of licenses that you have, and some of them, it just depends on how the ABC has approved your establishment. Some of them are for beer and wine, beer and wine when um, you have a full kitchen. It's a different license. So um, just so I have a, a frame of reference, a type 42 is just beer and wine, or is it I think beer it's and wine? With it, it's public premises, which means uh, it's not a bona fide eating place. It's a nuance in the ABC code. But there were some other parts of this in here that um, I think it, it restricts it. It says at no time off-site alcohol sales should be allowed. Well, we have a, a type 20 permit as well that allows us to sell wine to go. So, again, that would preclude us from... Participating, it just if it's written the way it is, maybe this is too many details for what we're talking about right now. Well, um, looking at entertainment, we've heard about how a small coffee shop, how entertainment could help enhance Miss um, Hope's business. Should something be changed, how could entertainment enhance your business? So. Uh, from the beginning, from the outset of kind of creating the concept for rootstock. We'd always hoped that, you know, this this discussion has gone back for years and years, and we'd hoped to be able to offer live jazz or somebody playing an acoustic guitar on the patio or something of that nature during daytime hours, nothing late. Um, I think the idea of trying to create something that um, permits that very easily prior to 10 p.m. makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of the problems that people have concerns about are, are late night issues. So to whatever extent we could simplify the process, Rootstock would be right there in a heartbeat to try to you know, embellish our offering by adding some jazz or an acoustic guitar at certain times during the day or during the evening, inside, outside, you know, whatever, whichever way it, it fits into what ultimately is crafted. Other questions for Mr. Foley? Thank you. Anybody else? on up. Please give us your name. My name is Bill Reynolds. Um, I'm the proprietor at Billy's Boston Chowder House. Uh, we have entertainment in our use, uh, our, our use permit as well. Uh, item number 11, from 11 to 11. Uh, just a practical standpoint. Um, it's interesting to me. It's sort of like I agree with what Terry Hope is saying, is that if you look at my place, you know, typically mom, grandma, grandpa will eat there, and they're not really interested in some jazz. You know, maybe a little bit of piano music, 
So when I look at entertainment in a restaurant establishment serving food, it can be almost a nuisance if it's not well controlled within my own establishment. So I've tried to, I tried it, and uh, I might bring it back on a Thursday again, keeping it ballad level, really low, maybe only two entertainers, maybe an acoustic guitar, maybe just a piano, and that should be it. So when you look at entertainment, um, there is different types of entertainment based on your establishment. Me being sort of a family, friends and family eatery, not really a bar, it, it doesn't really, uh, it, we do very low key type of situation. So when I look at other establishments where they have a, a real a bigger bar and more of a sort of a, something that really lends itself more towards going out and drinking, then that's almost a different type of entertainment to me. And uh, as you control entertainment by only allowing, say, one or two musical pieces, I mean, that could go into really any restaurant because they're going to be low-key anyways. They have to. Customers want to eat and dine. It's really supposed to be background music. You know, my, cr my crew is talking to me about doing bingo, you know, as, as a sort of a community service kind of fun thing to do. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, so I'm looking at, okay, well, how can I entertain my customers besides good service and good food? And, again, trying to keep it low-key. So my feedback is that, you know, maybe you should look at realistically putting constraints on the types of uh, music, particularly, definitely the hours, you know, in a way that, you know, when you have a nightclub, it's a nightclub. When you have a bar that has a, f when, you're, when you're a restaurant that has a full bar, then maybe you have to put, some other type of constraints on it. And when you look at other restaurants and coffee shops, we're, we're all there to entertain and, and treat our guests the best we can to have a pleasurable experience. In the food business, you are in the entertainment business as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. You may be interested to know that Los Gatos has a whole set of ordinances regulating bingo. <laughs> you may be interested to know that Los Gatos has a whole set of ordinances regulating bingo. You might want to check on that. Anybody else? Come on up. We're going to stop at 6, so if you really want to say something. I mean, well, we're going to, we might, I mean, we're going to stop with the comments at about 6.30 to get some discussion in, or else we're just going to take everybody who wants to talk, and we're going to continue the study session to another time when we're not going to take comments and just have a council discussion. So we figure out whether you want to talk to us. Sir. Uh, Sean Luca, Yogurt and Love, uh, 33 East Main Street. Uh, just want to uh, agree with some of the comments that Larry made about outside seating and making it so that it does uh, look like a part of town. Uh, the hodgepodge kind of you know pop-ups here and there. Uh, I do think when it comes to outside seating, the town council should be involved from a design standpoint. Uh, I'm in a very historic building. If I look at putting something outside, I want to make certain that I tie into the building. It's something I put out there doesn't block the building because that's one of the beautiful things about my my store. Um, outside seating, again, you kind of come back to 10 years ago, there was parking issues. 10 years from now, there's going to be parking issues. If we paralyze ourselves from parking and not look at good ideas and sensible ideas, you know, making certain that um, you know outside seating, the, the last person you see at 9 o'clock and everybody's you know shut down at 10, um, you know, managing those things and making it an annual uh, renewal for their permit. And if they, you know, are not abiding by that, if there's too many complaints, then they, we don't renew the permit. And so, you know, staying within that process and managing that process, I think there's some flexibility for the town council to, you know, add these little things or even try them out for a year and see what the, the real town feedback is uh, and then choose not to renew the permit, you know, at the next year. That's just my comment. Questions for Mr. Luca, Councilwoman Sayak. I just wanted to make sure I understand. So when you say permit, are you talking about your CUP or you're talking about an additional outside seating permit? Absolutely, additional outside seating permit. I think you're going to have a CUP for the restaurant or the space or the retail or whatever it may be. And so looking at adding something to that, again, if it doesn't go over, say, the fire code for a seating allotment, um, make, of course, keeping it safe, uh, not clogging up the sidewalks so people, pedestrians can come through. I think that should be treated as kind of a separate issue 
um, and looked at it on an annual basis as far as renewal is concerned. So having gone through the CUP yourself, mm -hmm. and I know how it was pretty cumbersome for you, right. you would be in favor of another permit system absolutely if it allowed you to have outside seating yeah absolutely i think the the movement um that we that the town council and has gone through since we opened a year and a half ago on that cup process and the direction you're going is absolutely the right direction you realized how cumbersome it was and and so the the fixes which i think can also be something we need to fix first before we go down this road because uh, they'll just get in the way of the other you know items uh yeah, absolutely. It should be a CU process. I think, you know, something like that should be looked at, you know, as a permit on an annual basis. Outside entertainment, you know, alcohol in the outside venues, those type of things. You know, if the restaurant owner is not managing those things and it's getting out of hand, then they shouldn't get their permit renewed. So, you know, the town, you know, people that live in the town know that, okay, we have a, a voice and a way to, you know, combat this and it's not something that's permanent and stamped and it can never be removed. Right. I, I'm going to beat a dead horse here yeah. and make sure I understand. When you talk about an additional permit for outdoor seating, are you envisioning an administrative permit or, you are, or are you envisioning going through a planning commission hearing and potentially an appeal and a town council hearing? No, I think it should go through all of those. Really? I, I mean, it, it's, it's only fair to the, the town. Um, you know, a good idea is a good idea. And again, we can stay paralyzed with parking for many years to come. Uh, but good ideas are good ideas. And if we build a good structure around it and a, a good defined structure so that when it does come to your desk, it's not something that is laborious and, and so time consuming that nobody wants to go through the process. I think that some of the discussion before was why have a CUP process and why have a CUP and then when you're out there, you're actually, you've got 10 more seats or you're serving something you're not supposed to be serving. Uh, I believe Alex Holt you know, mentioned something like that of, let's build it so that it works for everybody. Um, but I've been through the CUP process. It was, it was around Ordinance 2021, so that was kind of tough. Um, but I, I believe at the end of the day, the right decision was made because my business is open. Um, but, uh, it, the process is there to you know protect the town and and give some direction for the business owners. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else, Mr. Holt? I I don't want to by keeping looking at the clock and telling you guys to rush up here. I don't want to cut anyone off. So if you do want to speak, it's six thirty now. So let's go ahead. And if you want to make a comment, please make a comment, and we may end up continuing this to another day. But or in any event, Mr. Holt. Good evening, Council. Um, Alex Holt, I'm the owner of Holt's Restaurant. I'm also the president for the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, this topic has been something I've been trying to uh, think a lot about, uh, how to make the process doing business in Los Gatos um, quicker and more simple and more easy to understand for new businesses coming into Los Gatos. And I kind of like uh, a lot what Sean is saying, about having a process where you come in with an application, it gets looked at at our very competent staff, they make a decision, an issue and license to start a business, and it's a one month process, and then after six months, the town council, the town itself, and everyone around it has time to kind of create an opinion and get feedback on how is this business performing, does it fit Los Gatos, and you kind of get that temporary uh, status on on your license and then when you go in for the second time to actually get your CUP taken care of, you're already in business, you're either making money or trying to and uh, the council has so much more information to go from whether this is a viable business or not and then I think you can have another check-in like maybe at 18 months or 12 months or something like that and then when you get past that maybe it can go out to three years and ten years. Um, but Doing it that way, you kind of get through the process a lot quicker. You can get businesses in in these empty spaces and get the town to kind of give feedback on the different topics, and it gives everyone more information to make better decisions. And um, I just think it would be something that would benefit the business community a lot where 
the process is so much quicker and being quicker it will be cheaper and all this like negativity that the town gets about being slow and not like taking too long time and it kind of gets laughed at by the business community like how can it take a year or two year to get this and this done um, doing it this way it would kind of get things going and I think uh, it would benefit a lot of people and it would be easier for you guys to have more information at the six month mark saying okay well you're not following this and this and this because uh, as a business owner it's not that easy to know all these laws and all these rules you have to abide by and uh, sometimes a CUP is like tied into a building and it kind of is outdated and it doesn't work for that business so it's very easy for you guys at a six month mark and say okay this 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 needs to change we don't like this this is really good here is your CUP and then in at a year mark or 18 month mark you sit down again and say okay this is the community's feel on this project and so on questions for mr holt councilman rennie thank you mayor jensen so uh, mr holt just a uh, clarification um, maybe from you um mr luca was describing a process where we had let me call them a base cup and some supplemental cups for outdoor seating or entertainment or something like that um, and I could see the supplementals being ones that we review in six months and we tell you, bad boy, you can't have it anymore. But a base, let me call it a base COP, um, where you've now spent $100,000 to build out your business and then six months later we tell you, sorry, you have to leave. That doesn't seem like it would work. Is, is that what you were thinking? I don't think that it's, sorry, you have to leave. I think it's like everyone who's doing business here wants to do what's best for the community and wants to, because that's how you're going to stay in business. If you do something that Los Gatos wants and provides a good service, you're going to stay in business, you're going to be profitable. And if you're not, there is now a tool for you guys to correct these issues and help the business in the right direction. And at the 12-year mark, and if, if it's not working, well, so be it. If they're not following the rules and the guidelines of the town that are very clear and very strict with very competent people, then they probably shouldn't do business here. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to follow up uh, along the lines of Mr. Rennie. For this question, I want you to make a couple of assumptions, Mr. Holt, that a CUP, a conditional use permit, is a process currently that goes through staff, planning commission, council, uh, and um, that a permit, I'm going to define a permit as something that is more contractual, that it's an agreement like a contract between the business and the town. A CUP is right now very hard for the town to eliminate. A permit, a contract, is a lot easier to, to change. Now, within that context, um, are you saying that the business would get a conditional use permit and then it would it could come back in three months, uh, six months, whatever, and the town would say, you're not doing something uh, correctly or the way we want, and so therefore you need to change or you need to stop. Because my concern there is that, you know, the business has put in money. Uh, and so I need to understand better what it is that you're saying, because I'm not understanding right now. Well, the way I understand the system is that each building comes with a basic CUP in a way where you can be open. This is considered a restaurant. You can be open from this hour to this hour. And then clearly when you go into that business, you go, okay, this looks like something I can work with. This is the basic rules for this business. I'm going to get into this business, start operating. And then at the six month mark is where you modify this. That way we constantly update this CUP for the building so it's not 20 years old and it talks about things that are not relevant anymore. And at the six month mark, they're already in business, they're making or trying to make money and they can say, okay, so my customers say they wanna be open till 10 but currently I can open, only be open to nine. Uh, and at that point you can modify the CUP, you can, um, change if there's something that's not being followed you can um, very hardly slap down because there's no point of having rules if people are not following them right now there's rules about all these things and it's not being followed no one is complying to them and like only if someone complains there's someone who goes out and say something 
and then it happens again the next day. There are signs everywhere, they're not supposed to be there. There's people doing pretty much what they want and that's what I'm trying to um, say. The business community wants guidelines that works. We want to follow the rules, but we need rules that are, that everyone be, is kept accountable to the same rules. So there is not this person can do this and then this person does the same thing and now he gets slapped on the wrist, but this person has been here for 30 years and he knows X, Y, and C, so now he can get away with it. I think that's the most important thing, that it becomes like an honest system where everyone follows the rules and we like take away a lot of rules and make it easier and more common sense. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Holt, I've, on the, along the same lines, I know that when you went into your <coughs> space, there was a conditional use permit on it because it used to be a restaurant. So for my question, I'm just gonna make the assumption, if you had an empty building and there was nothing there and there'd never been a CUP, there would be no such thing as a base CUP that you're talking about. You'd have to start from scratch. So with your example, are you, are you suggesting that if I go into an empty warehouse, let's say there's an empty warehouse on North Santa Cruz, and I want to make that into a restaurant, it has, and are you suggesting that I should be able to open with staff saying it's okay for you to have a restaurant, and then six months from now saying and the conditions on your restaurant are these? I'm saying that I think that the town staff is very competent and they understand what is going on with the community, what the zones are, what would fit in certain areas, and that they, in such a case, would be able to make such a judgment. And if there's a case where it's a little tricky, where it's like, oh, a lot of maybes, of course, they will just call a meeting and say, hey, we'd like to talk to the council about this, we'd like to talk to the planning commission about this, and, and get more guidance of what that base would be, but just speed up the process and make it less cost, more cost effective. Okay, um, not quite on the same, this is much more general. One of the themes that I hear you say is that, well, if it doesn't work, we should re-examine it. You know, 10 years from now, it might be something different, whatever it might be. So if the town council were to choose to create a law about alcohol and entertainment restaurants, and put in a book called an ordinance, we couldn't change that easily. It would go to planning commission, it might go somewhere else, it would take a long time. But what we have right now is a policy that the council can change as it chooses or as it might be appropriate. Given the explanation that I've give you, given you, which is not complete, and I'm gonna do a caveat, but it, assuming that that's correct, which do you think would be more beneficial to you as a business owner? Um, I don't think I have enough information to make a smart comment on that. I think, uh, I think you guys are very intelligent people and have more background on the town basic structure, and I think you guys can figure out whatever way we can get to a simplification of the CUP process and get businesses that are sitting empty right now, get them filled up and, and get the town moving so we can kind of compete with Willow Glen and Campbell and all these booming places in this area and not become, no offense, but Saratoga where it kind of slows down and, and, and gets sleepy. Any other questions for Mr. Holt? Thank you. Anybody else? I, I think we'll just take comments because we're kind of running out of time to have a comprehensive discussion. So if, you, if you're sitting here, I know many of you own businesses. I know many of you are interested. Anyone that wants to just get your comments on the record on this, we'd be, love to hear from you. Okay. Sir? I'm Bob Long. Uh, simply a resident. Uh, I have businesses, but they're unrelated to storefronts. And Alex just said everything that I wanted to say. Basically, that we've got to look at the ecosystem locally. Uh, I work with a lot of the merchants in my profession. I know their, their laments. I know their comments. And I've watched their businesses for years. Some of them, some of them are my dearest friends. So I'm, I'm in favor of an ecosystem that serves everybody locally. Thank you. You have a question, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Long, I want to understand you better, too. Um, uh, you say, you know, you've been here in town, you know, the businesses, et cetera. Um, are you looking, are you thinking that a business gets a conditional use permit and that that then runs with the land, i.e. it stays there even if the uh, individual businesses leave? Or are you talking about more of a contract with the town 
I, I think more on the side of contract, I might also reiterate what uh, Alex said. I need more information. I'm not a professional in this field, but the uh, CUP staying with the property itself uh, seems dated as, as things change. And I, and I would think that the council and, and mayor want to visit that subject uh, on a frequent basis, whatever it might be, and make sure that um, nothing is overlooked. Uh, and if that's answering the question, I'm not positive, but um, I, I, I want to uh, make sure that come up with a plan that looks after uh, the ecosystem of the town, the merchant, and the public. And if there's if there's a way to amend how we strategize around any of this, that's great. And again, I'm in, I'm in, I think the business and the populace and and the people that come and visit and spend are the three kind of you know legs of the stool, so to speak. It'll make the town thrive. That's my goal. Thank you. Councilwoman Sayak, wait a minute, you've got one more. Mr. Long. Mr. Long. One more. Um, you mentioned you work with several merchants, so I, I also want to understand that. One of the questions that I have is if you work with any of the retailers. We've heard several comments now from those that own restaurants, and and I think I understand the issues there, but there's also other issues that are very specific to retail. And so one of the things I've heard, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that they want some flexibility, some hybrid, so that they can bring actual customers into their stores versus the flexibility and ease of online. Anything that you see in this alcohol and entertainment policy that you think would be beneficial to retail, not restaurants, but to retail? Okay, I, I can't place my answer in terms of a CUP and its function per se, but I'll give you a very explicit example of a Cancer Care Point fundraiser event. I won't name the storefront. It was retail, it was clothing, and uh, they did serve alcohol, I assume, you know, uh, under, you know, correct auspices or whatever, uh, but it was a fantastic event, well attended. Uh, cause was good, of course, uh, with Cancer Care Point, and um, all in all a success. But that they bend any rules, I don't actually know. But I, w I would f wish to find anything that supported that. If they did twist something, um, we should find a way that there should be 10 of those a month, you know, because I'm, I'm very strongly, obviously, behind that. I think it's good for the business. And I, and I um, you know, I adore the people that, that committed their time and their storefront to that and stayed open late. Okay. That makes sense. And if Martha. I can uh, follow up, it does make sense. So, so you're talking more about these occasional uses. So. There's occasional uses. Okay. So, yeah. um, using this example, parking and intensification is is a concern. As a customer that attended, how did you, I'm sure there were more customers than usual at this retail event? Can you? It was give true, me? and I think it was a Tuesday night. Okay. But, uh, if we would steer toward Monday, Tuesday, we alleviate at least at least a little bit of that. Some of the lots have spaces on Monday, Tuesday night. I mean, the main the main lots. Okay, and did you have any problems finding parking? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? On up. We will end at, um, at least by five of seven, if not before. So if you want to talk, please be ready. Yes. Hi, Susan Testa. I'm speaking on behalf of my store, Romantique down here in Las Gatas. We do have parties, and um, we also serve our customers wine if they would like a glass of wine. I've, I've always understood, or maybe misunderstood, that if I give them a glass of wine without charging them, it was okay. I'm not sure what the ordinance is going to be in the future. Um, but it, it sets us apart from going to the mall. It sets us apart from the big retailers. We don't um, charge anybody for it. We don't over-serve anybody. But occasionally, we'll give somebody a glass of wine friend or whatever, you know, or a good customer. Um, and I know that a lot of retailers do, and that's what sets our retail establishments down here differently from the mall. Um, so I, I definitely think somehow in the provisions um, to include us in, to be allowed to do that, whatever the number is, would be great. If we have to get a permit, fine. Um, I also was going to just say something about that has nothing to do with my business, but does actually, as far as the downtown area, I think it would be a great idea if you could um, collaborate with, with Willow Glen and Campbell, because both have historic buildings and downtown living, 
and they seem to have managed to do outside seating without destroying the look of the historic buildings. And I think it would revitalize our downtown, which we definitely need to do. I don't know if you guys have noticed how many empty spaces there are now. It's ridiculous. I mean, I've been in business for 21 years. I've never seen it this empty. And supposedly we are like, you know, bouncing back in the economy. But we need to support our downtown businesses by allowing some change. We need to be, you know, thoughtful for our residential neighbors. But you do live in a downtown area, just like, say, Campbell and Willow Glen, the people that live there. We, and I understand we want to limit, you know, the noise level after 10 or before 10. And that seems fair. So that's just my opinion. Questions for Ms. Testa? Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Richard Henke. I just opened the new uh, wine bar or wine tasting room for the winery, uh, Left Bend Winery on 346 North uh, Santa Cruz Avenue. So I had a took over existing space, had a CUP, so I had to follow those and uh, would like to later go back and get additional changes and go through the CUP. But at least when I came into the space a month ago, I knew what I was getting into, at least that I had a defined CUP and I was able to live with that. If it was not, didn't have a CUP, I would have been probably more hesitant to invest money into a space or I wouldn't know what I was going to get into. So that's all. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, and I'll, I'll just pause again for a second because what I would intend to do at this point, because we've gone so long with your comments, thank you. We really appreciate your input. Thank you for being here. We're not going to have any time to do any kind of meaningful discussion, um, given that we have to end and be ready for our regular meeting that starts at 7. So um, just before I make this announcement, Ms. Prevetti, I'm assuming that because it's a study session, then we can, it's not subject to rules for public hearing or Etc. And if the mayor wants to put it on the a future agenda, the mayor can do that. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So, I think what what we'll probably do is continue this to either October twentieth or November third, depending upon what those agendas look like. And I can't remember right now. Um, no. Yeah, we have um, interviews scheduled for October twentieth for our ad hoc citizen committee as well as a brief closed session on properties and other matters. And we've already set a study session on special events for November 3rd. We might make it part of our regular agenda. Um, Vice Mayor. It might be uh, that, um, and this will be the mayor's uh, call, but the one that has special events, that one might have a, you might want to change those. And I might want to change that and also maybe interrelated. So that's on the, the 3rd or the 20th? Uh, the special events is on the 3rd, and clearly the mayor could change either um, of those dates. So those of you that are interested, why don't you make a tentative note on your calendar for November 3rd, because that sounds like it's more likely. And then please check back with um, the town scheduling for when this is going to be considered again. But more than likely, it'll be on November 3rd. Um, I would imagine that if you have spoken here today on this subject, please don't, don't plan to speak when it's next call because we'd like to be able to get to some kind of discussion from the council so that we can give direction to the staff and so that you can all know what direction that the council is thinking of going in and then give us your input when that it's appropriate, when it gets to the point where there might be some action taken. So I would plan... Um, if you've spoken today, not to speak on November 3rd. Now, I can't tell you not to, but I would hope that you might let us get to a discussion depending on how much time that we get. So that's just a, a friendly advice as to what I would imagine the shape that this would take in the future. So probably November 3rd. So with that, we're going to adjourn our study session. And we'll and on tonight's calendar for our regular meeting, item 11 is a discussion of restaurant, retail, outdoor seating. So those of you that are interested in that, please get your cards ready. Thank you.